Hello and welcome to today's video. Today, um, I get asked a number of times questions like what I use on a daily basis. Um, and uh, this is, I wanted to show two variations of that. One that I'll show today and one I'll show another time uh, where I uh, do like a pencil case tour or a pen cup tour. Now these are not, this isn't my EDC or anything like even the pen cup, the pencil case one. This is more about like what I reach for when I'm sitting at my desk and what I have here ready to go. Um, and so I have this pen cup, which is a Rubik's Cube style pen cup. Um, like some of the things move around. For those of you who follow my Instagram, you might know that I really enjoy a Rubik's Cube. I'm not particularly quick, but I enjoy doing it and I enjoy the challenge of all the different versions of that. So having a little Rubik's Cube uh, pen cup here, I found to be quite fun. Um, and so what lives in here is there's, there's a stock few items that um, live in here all the time. And then things like the fountain pens often get sort of swapped around depending on what I have inked up. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do a quick run through of what lives in here on a, on a daily basis. I'm not gonna do writing with all of them because some of them are fairly basic items. I'll do writing with a few of the fountain pens just to show sort of what I've got inked up right now as we speak. Um, so starting with basics. There's always a grey lead pencil in here, or a black lead pencil, depending on what you want to call it. This is the Blackwing Preservation Hall version, which I have in here at the moment, which I really like. I'm a musician, so having, um, you know, sort of wood case pencils is actually always very handy. Sometimes I have a mechanical pencil in here as well, but at the moment um, I don't. I also have the Maker's Cabinet um, Ferrule here, which is their brass pencil extender, um, using still one of their pencils in there, so working through those, a little razor on the end. This is a really lovely product. There's reviews of a number of these on my channel, um, this is nice because it's got a nice weight in the end there for when I'm writing. Another staple I have in here is a Sharpie. I have the uh, ultra fine point one. Uh, it's always really handy for labeling stuff uh, and for testing paper. So that's always good. Uh, a highlighter. The um, Faber-Castell text liner here, it's the one of choice at the moment for the last couple of years actually because it's slim enough to be, be able to be pre precise with it but it has good like, you know, uh, pigment capacity, whatever you want to call it, like it writes for a long time and they're fairly affordable, love that. Um, then I have a range of ball pens. Um, so for instance here, I have the uh, Pilot G2 Pro, which uses the standard G2 uh, refill, as far as I believe, um, And but it's in a nice sort of wider body with a little bit of a rubberized grip there. Super, super reliable, super great refill um, and just a really lovely pen. Uh, another ball pen I have in here is the Retro 51 Rollerball. Uh, this is the Stealth model. Um, I change between this and the Albert in here, depending on what I'm feeling like uh, for a, a, a while. Um, I really like these, once again, really reliable, write really, really well, and uh, kind of nice in the hand because they're sort of like a nice size and they, they feel good. I'll just show you the, uh, the pilot in that form. And so, so like, yeah, it feels, it feels nice in the hand. Um, a couple of nice sort of... Uh, roller pens and then a ballpoint pen. This is um, a bit of a novelty one. It's the Slytherin house pen um, when I went to see the Cursed Child play here in Melbourne. Just a retractable roller ball. It's very, very nice actually. It writes really well. Uh, not The pigment ink is, um, or that, that oil-based ink is not too sticky, uh, which I really approve of. And uh, it's just a, it's a really, once again, a really nice weight and size in the hand. It's kind of reminiscent of like a few other pens like the, uh, like, uh, uh, Pelican and things like that, uh, but it's just sort of like a standard pen body that uh, the uh, producers of the show creating the merchandise put a Slytherin logo on, because apparently I'm House Slytherin. I, did, I was forced to do the test by some friends uh, and uh, came up as House Slytherin, so I have a few Slytherin things. At the moment, I'm actually wearing a pair of Slytherin socks uh, as well. So those are the ballpoint pens. Now you see I've got five pens left in here. Uh, four of these, well, all of these are fountain pens, and one of them is a disposable fountain pen. I keep this here, Pilot Varsity V pen. Super, super simple, super affordable replaceable if they get lost, but also reliable. I don't write with black fountain pen ink that much. Uh, if I'm writing with black, it tends to be something like one of the Pilots or the Retro 51, or even a Sakura uh, Micron pen, you know, when I'm doing bullet journaling and things like that. But if I want to write with black fountain pen ink, it's just easy enough to have something constantly here, ready to go. Uh, and so I really enjoy these. I find them to be great. There's, once again, I've done a review of this on my channel. These are better than a disposable fountain pen. These are actually like, I consider these to be a very, very usable fountain pen. 
And then the four other pens I have in here, uh, I will show these now as a, and then do like a little writing sample with them. Let's start with the classic, the Lamy 2000. Just an absolute, you know, honker of a pen. Just absolutely perfect. Feels great in the hand. Super reliable, super smooth. I have this inked up with Robert Oster Great Southern Ocean, which is a beautiful dark blue, almost blue black. Got a bit of a tearly undertone. I really enjoy it. So this is the Lamy 2000 with a medium nib. And as I said, Robert Oster... Running out of ink. It's actually a very, very nice pen, nice and wet. As you can see, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful ink there. Love this partnership, love this pen, love this ink. Another Robert Oster ink uh, in another pen here. This is the Twisby Diamond 580, the standard one, not the ALR or anything like that. Just a really solid, beautiful Twisby pen. Uh, inked with Robert Oster Verde de Rio. I've had this inked up for a while. I haven't used it that much. Um, uh, I should keep using it. I think it's a beautiful ink and a beautiful pen. Uh, I've just been using it for like headers and things like that, but it's worked really, really nicely. The Twisby. Diamond 580 with a medium. All my pens are mediums at the moment, and I'm not upset about that. Uh, Robert Oster. Verde de Rio. This ink is just so lovely. It's kind of like, people put it in that avocado family. I think it's closer to like a foresty, a light foresty green. Like it's leafy, it's, it's earthy. It's not, you know, it's not super dark. It's not super vibrant. It sits in a very, very nice place and I really enjoy it. Next, I have a really interesting pen. I reviewed this a couple of years ago, and I, I admit I've used it occasionally, but not as much as I probably should, because it writes really, really beautifully. This is the James Finnis, uh, who runs Pensive Pens here in Australia. This is the Lithos, or Lithos pen. Beautiful, beautiful material. Just absolutely stunning. Uh, it comes with like a standard Yovo medium nib. I have this kind of inked up with uh, Pannonia Abigail, uh, which is a beautiful, very light pink ink. Once again, haven't used it a whole lot simply because it's used for particular purposes, marking things and writing particular things, uh, but it's a really lovely, lovely pen. James Finnis uh, is the pen maker uh, who runs, as I said, uh, Pensive Pens, which is a retailer here in Australia. Um, check them out online if you're interested in Robert Oster products and some of and James's own pens. Um, it's been through a few ups and downs in the last couple of years, but uh, uh, yeah, it makes beautiful pens. As I said, this is the Lithos, or Lithos, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, with a medium nib. And the ink uh, is Pannonia, Pannonia, I have it said, uh, Abigail. Beautiful, like really interesting pink ink. I really like it. It's kind of, I uh, just think I've wiped another ink through it. Um, it's got some really interesting sort of pastel tones and it's nice and light but it's it's got a nice sort of um shading on the page which i really enjoy and the last pen i have in here is the gravitas pens delrin which is a, a modeled off the century model which is a great pen uh once again yovo medium uh inked up with leonardo classic sepia and then lastly of course the gravitas pens made by ben walsh this is the Delrin, modelled off the Sentry, S-E-N-T-R-Y model. Um, medium nib, medium steel, beautiful, lovely, lovely pen, lovely ink. The ink is Leonardo Classic Sepia. That's like Leonardo Officina Italiana, whatever, they, you know. They're one of their inks, beautiful ink. I actually really love these sepia colored inks. Uh, and this is uh, a very nice one. It's a little bit on the caramel -y side for sepia on my, in my taste, but um, a nice light brown and I think a very nice partner to that pen. So I hope you found this brief tour of my pen cup, which sits on my desk just there, just off screen that way. Uh, 365 days of the year. These are the sorts of things I reach for all the time. I've always got a ballpoint pen nearby, a couple of like rollables, 
gray lead pencils always, highlighters and things, of course, and then a range of fountain pens, which I love writing with. Um, sometimes these live in other sort of stands and cases and things, but uh, these, that, this is the kind of standard setup I would have uh, at home next to me at my desk as I'm working, as I'm taking notes, as I'm writing down lyrics, as I'm writing translations, all these kinds of things, all big part of my daily writing, my journaling, bullet journaling, all of that kind of thing. These are the kinds of basic writing instruments I have with me. So I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Please, uh, if you've got comments or anything, let me know. Uh, also, like, let us know what you have sitting by you at your desk. Like, this is a fairly simple setup. I've, I've had really elaborate setups of like a lot of different things over the years. And I kind of have stripped it down to be kind of more like just a, a very basic, easy setup because that uh, that really suits my needs. And uh, it means that I'm not reach, I'm not having a huge choice of things to reach for and I can actually really use what I enjoy. So yeah, like and subscribe, comment uh, if you've got products you think I should be looking at or if there's a way you would like to support the channel uh, by sponsoring a review or providing an item for a review, I would love to hear from you. Uh, and please get in touch if there's uh, a way you'd like to support the channel because uh, it's your support that makes this channel possible. So thank you so much and uh, I'll talk to you soon.